All right. Today is going to be a fun episode. So I've been working pretty hard on Project Snowman for the last little while, trying to get it ready for the Let's Go Truck Show. And I talked to Tom at FX Fleet Graphics there, and we settled on a date in a few weeks. He's just slammed with work right now, uh, putting wraps on fleet trucks. So we finally found a date that's going to work when the installer is going to come out and put the, the gold bars on the side of the truck. So that's going to make a great episode. So I figured what I'm going to do is pivot away from Snowman because uh, I don't I really can't do much work. I can't put on the air cans. I can't put on the exhaust All that other fun stuff until that those graphics are in place. So I figured we'll we'll take a break from working on snowman and We'll take little by little for a road trip I say road trip I mean we're actually gonna take little by little and put it to work so you know that old snowman trailer that I found on the hunt there a few months ago that is gonna make such a wicked wicked replica well I actually bought it and we're gonna drag it home and originally I had the vision or at least the desire to try and use snowman the snowman truck to haul the snowman trailer home but there's still a lot of work that needs doing on that truck there and I actually bought the trailer from the guy and he was nice enough to actually park it there and I just I felt bad so I thought you know what now that I got to wait for the graphics it's a perfect weekend to actually go for a, go for a ride little by little and hook onto that trailer and hopefully drag it home so uh, my best friend Corey there he's going to come out and help me he's going to follow me along I'm taking a page out of Peg's book where he always hauls his uh, rickshaw in behind when he does a revive and drive only guy I know will drive an old rig like this 500 miles because inevitably something breaks or you need some parts or something goes wrong it's always a good idea to have another uh, vehicle I mean I'm pretty I'm pretty proud and, and uh, confident a little by little won't have an issue but you never know so he's gonna follow me along with uh, with a variety of tools and other goodies things that we might need airlines I and mean, that trailer has been sitting for a while and then he's also gonna, I'm gonna hook on the trailer and take all of the Dayton wheels, well maybe not all of them, but at least four, and we'll have those as backup in case those old 1020s uh, tube tires are rotten or we have a blow it on the highway, something like that. Hopefully the Dayton's off of here, we'll just slap right on that, on that trailer, we can keep on trucking. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really excited about this. I, uh, I haven't really taken little by little very far from town. It's just been kind of short drive to the truck shows, that kind of thing. So. This will be, uh, be the uh, cool and because this truck hasn't actually pulled anything probably in, I don't know, 10, 15-ish years, maybe 20 years. So it'll be exciting to actually use that fifth wheel for once and put this, uh, put this old cat to work. So I like to, I like to subscribe to the better to have it, not need it mentality. Because I know if I actually load these up and have them ready, those existing ones, those existing tires will have no issues so a little bit of dry rot on these but they're still holding wind and talked to a guy at the tire shop and he said that the 10r 22.5s which is what these are these are off the duke is the same diameter of spider hub on the the 1020s so a lot of people with 1020s on older equipment or trailers would just flip over to the uh the 22.5s and it would fit right on there so i'm going to trust that guy and we'll uh We'll put four of these on the trailer and have them ready to go. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It's always good to give the drivetrain a good greasing. Get in there. there we go. Thanks again to the fan that sent me this pistol grip grease gun. There, so as good more is better. Okay. Transmission's looking good. Right on. Now, I'm also looking for anything that's 
that's loose or missing bolts, right pig? <laughs> You don't want to have a, a drivetrain issue. So while I'm down here, I figured I'd check the, the level of the diff here. Okay, a little bit of a little bit of metal, but that looks like normal wear. Nothing too exciting. So we'll wipe that off the magnet. And then we should have oil just below the, the fill line here. Oh yeah. And it still looks clear. Good. Yeah, it's down a touch. Maybe what we'll do is we'll just top that up. All right, so we're starting to see a little, little teardrop of oil. So that's full and ready to go. So the diffs are all topped up. I think I'll just check the, the front wheel bearings here. Yeah. It's pretty full, but if some is good, more is better. We'll give it a little shot since we're here. Good. Now on the, on the trailer, I remember when I went to look at that trailer, uh, originally the, I pulled one of these caps and it was bone dry. So I'll have to make sure I bring this pail with me and we'll top it up. We'll top them all up because they must be they must be leaking out the back uh, wheel seal, and uh, so we'll top them all up. And then when I get rolling down the road, we'll stop and and check them and make sure they're not they're not hot. Okay, what's next? I guess I got to still adjust the uh, air brakes. So the tires in the trailer are still holding a little bit of air, but I figured they probably still need a top up. And I was going to load up my generator and a compressor, but then I thought, well. We've got air on board on little by little here. So I went and picked up a, an M female coupler. I'm just gonna put it right into the tank there. So when the truck's fully aired up, I can just put an airline on there and we can go and fill the tires up. Yeah, something like that. Oh, beauty. We got air. Right, so we'll go ahead and throw some air in there. And I got the wheels chalked, so when I get up to whatever, over 100 PSI, I'll push in the park brake on the dash there, and that'll, that'll release the spring brakes, and then I can uh, adjust the slack adjuster. Okay, so I was wondering where the oil was going. I thought it might have been going on a wheel seal, but the drums are dry. So I think what's going on here is when I put this third member in, I don't know, a couple years ago, it, uh, I guess I didn't do a very good job sealing up the bottom. So I was wondering why this dip was low on oil. And now I can see, I thought this might have been spray from the leaky auxiliary, but I suspect, I mean, it could be, but it looks wet down here, right at the, uh, the seal face. So I think the oil's walking past. So there's another a project for another day. Joy. But it's not leaking that bad. So we'll, uh, we can still run her. So anyway, um, squirrel. So right now, Compressor just kicked off, so the truck should be fully aired up, but I haven't disabled the brakes on the dash yet. So right now, I'll turn this a little, you can see better. So, have, so the spring inside here is push, applying pressure to the, to the rod here, and it's, and it's pushing against the slack. So it's pushing out the brake shoes against the drum. So this truck is parked. So now what I'll do, now that there's air pressure in the system, I can go up on the dash, push the park brake in, the yellow button, and what's gonna happen is the slack will walk back in and then the brakes will be uh, unapplied. And then we're gonna adjust this little nut here and we'll tighten it up and then we'll, we'll back it off. I'll show you how to do that, but I'll go ahead and release it and then we'll come back and adjust this. <laughs> Make sure your wheel chocks are right against the tires, otherwise the truck will roll forward. All right, so you see? It's brought in and that's why the truck rolled forward a little. So now sometimes these little, these little rings get stuck. There we go. So now we want to tighten this. And you see, as I adjust it, actually I should have had one of my, the best tool for this is one of the uh, combination wrenches with the little ratchet. 
So you see what I'm doing is I'm taking up the slack and it's turning, it's turning that shaft there and applying the brakes, pretending we're applying the brakes. So there we go, that's tight. So that's just like if when this thing was all the way out. So now from tight, you wanna go back one quarter turn, but like that. And then you want to make sure that that little, that little lock comes back out. There we go. Okay, one down, three to go. Okay. So I'm just checking the, now that I put this train horn here, it's right in the way. But just checking the level of oil in the six speed. Oh yeah. Nice clean oil, and drips right out of there. So that's topped up and then another like I was saying you're always looking for something that's loose or missing or broken when you're crawling around and check this out that's not supposed to move in and out so I'll tighten this that's probably I noticed in an earlier video when I did a cold start smoke was coming out from underneath the truck so that's probably exactly where it was coming from no big deal we'll just tighten that band clamp up okay get ready to roll her on out of here So we're gonna use the Leonard Skinner fuel gauge. Oh, yeah, there's a good amount of diesel in there. It's probably half full, but we'll put a we'll put a little bit more in there because we do have a ways to go. I don't know why, but this truck makes me smile every single time. Okay, let's go for a little test drive, make sure everything's tip top.
77 a liter. What a deal. Yeah. Got to pay to play, I guess. Okay, so it's the next morning now. We're just getting some 99 cent heart attack and then we'll be on our way. A little rain shower came through, but it actually is supposed to be nice today. So hopefully it, uh, it stays that way. So yeah, and I wanted to, to mention to that fellow that commented a while ago that why does Mark always do everything by himself? Doesn't he have any friends? Well, there you go. I actually got a friend. All right, let's give her. And like Captain Ron says, anything's gonna happen, it's gonna happen out there. trailer park way over in the corner there. So Bill was saying that uh, he had a load of gravel picked up so he had the guy with the uh, whatever truck he had roll in here and hook on because if you remember in the last video that was parked up by the house. So he had someone hook on there and the lo and hold the brakes released and it rolled just fine so they parked it over here so Hopefully we can just hook on and a little bit of a uh, little bit of maintenance, adjust the brakes, put some oil in the hubs, and we should be able to roll on out of here. I hope. Oh, it's gonna be like I say, it's gonna be so cool having a trailer hooked onto this truck. Pretty cool, huh? 1978. It's almost as old as us. What's that? Give you a police yeah, check this out. It's got a cop car in the back. You could be, uh, you could be, uh, what's his nuts there? Buford. <laughs> Chase me home. Did you see that truck cop looking at us? When we rolled through. Uh, that stop sign? That yeah, that stop sign. I was sure he was going to pull us over. Hopefully he's gone by the time we come back. Oh yeah, we're we're perfectly legal. Actually, doesn't look too too bad. I hope the lights work, but I did get some temporary ones that we could string in there if we need to. Oh, is this just excess? Yeah, we'll suck that up. We'll zip tie that up. I mean, they still got air in them. <laughs> You're digging the cop car. I wonder where he picked this up. America. 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 
to protect and serve. Where the hell is Glacier County? Oh, no, no, of course. Uh, Bill mentioned that uh, he's in the movie industry. So they, I think they did this up for a, a movie they filmed. Oh, really? Yeah, I think he mentioned that to me last time I was here. That's pretty cool. We need some Hobbs mud flaps, like the movie truck. And we should have brought some Coors, at least a box of Coors to put in here. Yeah, should have. Man, those mud flaps are not coming off, huh? Look at the channel they put on there. Shit. It must have just been laying around. Yeah. Overkill much? Yeah, you, you don't have to worry about dry rock because these are tube tires, so they'll hold just fine. Until they don't. You don't need to worry about grip. Okay, well what do you think? First off, hook on and then we'll try and air it up. Yep. Well, at least the hood matches the trailer. It's color coordinated, right? <laughs> Oh, that's cool. All right, I guess we'll hook up the the hands there and see if we can unlock the brakes. And yeah, with any luck, everything will work, and we can just hook on and give her push in one hand, shit in the other. See which one fills up first, right? Oh, I got zip ties on here. Well, I might actually reach with it in there. How was that cranking? Okay, now these ones aren't marked. So I guess we just do trial and error. It's bit and push. There's blue on here. Oh, there's blue there. Okay. Oh, I don't know if that's actually. Yeah, it must be. Blue means something, right? I think so. Uh, what's going on here? There we go. Let the tanks fill. Oh yeah. Throw the lights on. Hear anything? Holy shit, we even got tail lights. We back in time for lunch. Or did that just jinx us? Park brakes are on, what do you think, doctor? I said the park brakes are on. I'm still got air going into the trailer. Do you see the slacks move? Maybe what I'll do is go work the trailer dolly yep. and see if, uh, see what happens back here. We'll definitely want to grease all these so those shafts don't seize up. Probably a little, little dry. So what do you think? I realize it's got a wood floor. Oh, nice and light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you got a wasp nest too. Oh, good. Some um, dump bees. Maybe the back, back, back one here have to. It's, that one kind of sounded like it was rubbing. Okay. Like nothing big, but. We'll back them off. But we got lights. I don't hear anything leaking. No, I don't hear anything leaking either. I just yet. <laughs> I don't know if you want to zip tie that cable right there. I just pushed it. Oh yeah, we like will. That. Okay, well let's put some uh, some oil in the hubs and I'll adjust the brakes, and then maybe we'll we'll drag her the road. Mm -hmm. See what happens. <laughs> Party wagon. So what were you saying? We better stop and get some coors on the way home. You know, we really ought to pay somebody for this. I got that all figured out. You just send the bill to Big Enos Burdett. <laughs> yeah, nice coat of paint. Like I was saying, I'm uh, thinking for the, for the Lesco truck show, just put some couches and chairs in here and if it's piss and rain, we'll just 
sitting here and drink Coors. Invite everyone in. Everyone is allowed to have a beer. Everyone gets a Coors that can quote a movie line. <laughs> Can't quote a movie line, you're not allowed in here. Decent condition, you keep the sun off of the timbers. They don't really go bad, do they? Do these planks look like they're slapped put together? Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, I know what you mean. Specialty made. You're gonna have to buy a sandblaster. Come over and blast this thing for me. Cool. So when I found this trailer, there was a, a lot of viewers out there that were clarifying that this is what's called a Canadian spread axle. For whatever reason, tr trucks, some trucks and a lot of trailers in Canada had the wheels instead of right beside each other, they spread them apart, probably to better level the load, right? on the tires so this doesn't match the movie truck exactly they should be closer together but i mean come on we're not uh we're not trying to make this perfect i just like that it's got the rib sidewalls all the way down without the curbside door because a lot of these trailers have the the curbside door and then of course it's a van trailer so a lot of the viewers pointed out well where's your uh, reefer unit your thermal king but if you look closely in the movie they just had a fake Thermal King shell that they slapped on the front of the trailer because there was no diesel tank underneath to actually run the unit. So that's probably what I'm going to do. Either try and find an old Thermal King shell and throw it on the trailer there. Or perhaps uh, Don has been uh, has offered to maybe try and weld up a replica. So that'll be, if we can't find one, we'll do that. But yeah, slap that on there, paint it black, and then get that, that uh, stagecoach scene wrap on there and it'd be just perfect. <laughs> What's that? Your NFG on your tire. Where? Right here. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll just rub that off a little bit of brake clean. NFG. <laughs> yeah, we don't want the truck cops seeing that. Look at that, we're even, we're even semi-legal. Boy, if it smoked empty, like when I'd slow down for them railroad tracks, and then took off again, I could see it. I don't even have a smokestack, and I can just see the fog behind me. I can't imagine when she's got a little bit of a load behind her. There's going to be a lot of, a lot of how dare you's on the way home. Where'd I put my... God, I'm going senile in my old age. Oh, the tool I set down like 30 seconds ago, I, I instantly lose. Oh, there's a good place for it on this little ledge up by the license plate. Yeah, good spot to put it, Mark. Okay, I don't want to jinx this, but bets on if these old tires hold together. What's that? I think so. Maybe if we were hauling 400 cases of Coors. You know the funniest thing about that movie though? So remember when they closed the, the doors? We really ought to pay somebody for that. Yeah. And they've got the beer filled all the way to the top. Yeah. Again, an aficionado like myself pauses the movie and studies it. And I think there was, what was it, like 40 cases if you did the math? Like the how many across, how many up? Yeah. So it would have only been like 10 forward. So they only had beer maybe, you know, 10 feet forward in, the, in a 48 foot trailer. <laughs> Why would they have stacked it like that? So I guess Burt Reynolds doesn't know how to drive any forking thing around. But it probably wouldn't have looked as good for the movie if it had 400 cases and they were only two feet high on some pallets. Someone was suggesting I should get a, uh, like a banner to pull down oh, yeah. with uh, the Coors beer, all the cases. I think that's cool and all, but I think even cooler would be getting Mrs. Twin Sticks her own Trans Am. I think that would all right. be all right. And then put that in there. It's an old guy that had one? Yeah. See if he wants to sell it. Problem is, they're holding their value now. I found one near Calgary that was a survivor, T tops, the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. He wanted like 75 grand for it. 
So they're not cheap. I guess I'm going to have to find a field Trans Am. Yeah. We're done crawling around under there. Well, I think the brakes are on anyway. Field Trans Am and restore it that way. Get some ramps and we'll put that cop car in the back. If it was the right vintage, I'd, I'd be tempted.
top. It's parked in this area close to here earlier this morning. It ain't 400 cases, but it's a start.
There, home sweet home. And that looks good. All right, let's see what the, uh, let's see what we were hauling. Hard to be one-handed. All right. Beer? Cheers, Corey. Thanks for the help. Anytime. Ah, that's tasty. You done good, didn't you, Freddy? Click the Twin Stick Garage logo to subscribe and be sure to comment down below. I encourage you to share any thoughts, feedback, suggestions, stories, or even just a simple hello. I read and appreciate every one. And if you really want to help out the channel, head over to my Patreon, a subscription-based service that you can sign up and see videos before they're released on YouTube. I'm also going to be posting some content that you can't see anywhere else, so go check it out.